Hey y'all, it's Andrew Green with Monster Creek Mushrooms, and today I'm going to show you how we make Grain Masters with both liquid culture and agar. So Paul Stamets in his book, Growing Gourmet and Medicinal Mushrooms, talks about the importance of Grain Masters in their ability to take uh, mycelium from agar or liquid culture and expand that to a uh, hundred, a thousand, or even sometimes ten thousand times its own mycelial mass. Uh, basically, that's just a fancy word for making a whole lot more for what little bit you're starting with. And so, to begin that process, first you have to pressure cook your grains. So for now, let me clean up my little workspace here, and then we'll get that open and get started. it's important to remember is to really sterilize your grains and with that comes cooking them. I cook mine, mine even my jars at uh, 15 psi for two and a half hours and I have tried working at the times down below that and have found that I get the most consistent reliable results with 15 psi at two and a half hours. So. sanitizer. Alright, so we take our liquid culture and it's been stirred up. You can see it moving around there. So we want to sanitize it, especially the self healing injector port. that the easiest way to make grain spawn, or to make uh, grain masters, rather, is to do it with liquid culture. It takes about, you know, a minute total of your time. if your syringe doesn't look like it's got enough in there you can kind of just inject it back let it really stir up everything in the jar and suck it back up and you should have a lot more mycelium in there instead of just liquid so now that I've got my mycelium I'm gonna take it and just stab it into the jar and I like to just do the twist and spray mycelium everywhere that take care of your sharps we've got a little sharps container sitting just outside the lab that goes in there that just goes in the trash and I usually just wrap my syringes up in my glove because I always change gloves between sets and I feel like I don't know whatever contamination might happen can be stored in my glove so so the second way that we make our grain masters is kind of the old school way it's by going from an agar dish with mycelium growing across the dish cutting a small piece of that out and placing it in a jar and letting it incubate until it's fully grown in like this one. Um, after this, all we'd have to do is bust it up and then spread it throughout grain bags. And this is about roughly a pound of spawn. And if I wanted to expand this 100 times, which I easily could do because this is very clean, I could go to uh, 10, 10 pound bags, which means I could turn one pound of spawn into 100 pounds of spawn very quickly. You're going to need three things to make a grain spawn jar um, as opposed to your liquid culture grain master jar. The liquid culture grain master jar, I just use a liquid culture lid with a self healing injector port and a syringe filter. For the grain master going through agar, I find it's a lot easier to use synthetic filter discs. Um, they come in two sizes if you buy them from shroomsupply.com. Uh, they come in a narrow uh, mouth jar shape and a wide mouth jar. And I, I prefer wide mouth because it gives me more room to work with my scalpel. Um, and then you can buy these canning lids or freezer lids um, and just place your filter right there in the jar. And then you can see there's a hole. 
you can see that there's a small hole here and basically that just allows for air exchange and the filter catches any mold spores, bacterial endospores or anything else that is trying to gobble up your good stuff in the jar. By good stuff I mean pure mycelium and sterilized grain. So let's get to making one. Alright, so when making your Grain Master from Agar, there's a little bit more work involved, there's a little bit, a few more steps and everything, but we just begin, like always, by cleaning our workstation. Uh, gathering up our tools, I use a little alcohol tray here. Um, sometimes I need to dip something or throw something in a sanitizing agent. It's pretty rare, but alcohol is cheap, so I could always, it's always better to have it on hand and not need it than it is to uh, need it and not have it and have to stop everything you're doing and go grab it. So you need your scalpel, your torch. I like I like that one a lot. Don't do this at home. I am a professional. Don't ever do it at all, even at home. All right. So, anyways. Um, now that playtime's over, <clears throat> you'll need your dish with your uh, culture that you're gonna want to expand. Uh, I, I always just look it up, look, hold it up to the light, make sure that I don't see any contaminations growing underneath the mycelium. Check it on the top. Make sure we pay special attention to the edges, looking for anything like mold, because a single mold spore in here um, will ruin all of the work you do. So. Just take it, sanitize it. Take your grain that you have sterilized. Um, little trick here, a lot of people don't uh, often know. I like to take this and just loosen the jar, the lid just a little bit without fully opening it. Um, because when you cover this thing with alcohol, it gets slick and it is hard to open. So there's your little trick to make your job easier so you're not because I, I can't tell you how many jars I've thrown across the room accidentally just you know so I take my scalpel and it's just sanitized right now cut it like so and unwrap it all right so after you have all everything set up I find it's better to take your scalpel and go ahead and sterilize it by getting it red hot on the end And just laying it down in the airstream to cool while you're opening your lids. You just want to make sure that whenever your scalpel, um, when you're about to go use it, like so, that it's not too hot. You don't want to burn your mycelium. So what I always do is take it and stick it in the edge. And if I don't hear a sizzle, then I know that it's cool enough to cut with. Now all you're going to do is you're going to take a piece, and I always like to cut from the back. That way I'm not stirring stuff up in front and then having mold spores or anything else that might be there uh, flowing back and contaminating the space behind. So you can go with just a small piece of mycelium like I just showed you and just cutting out a, a tiny little piece. Um, or, you know, if you want it faster, which this is not the most efficient way to grow it, but it is the fastest. So I take it and cut a ring and then just cut slices. trying to hold this facing more of the fan but right now I'm just trying to show you guys what I'm doing. Anything that goes out the dish gets thrown away and then I just take it I just cover those up, re-sanitize 
I re-sterilized my scalpel just so that it is uh, not covered in some sort of biomass whenever I go to use it later. I then close up my jar all the rest of the way. And then the real process with this is unlike liquid culture, where you can just spray it in and it, the mycelium runs down and will colonize the whole jar almost evenly, the agar needs to be distributed throughout the jar. So you're going to have to do some shaking. So I always try to get the agar down on the bottom first and then let the grain pour over it. And this will keep it from sticking to your uh, filter patch at the top. And I take it and I shake it in such a way you can kind of see which way the grains are moving. And you want to just shake it until you see the agar start to flow around. Like these right here. And you'll see that the grain will stick to it. That mycelium is very grabby. And then you just shake it to where you can see my seal, uh, the, the uh, agar wedges are spreading throughout the jar. Now you can take this Place it on your shelf, let it sit for a few days. Once it's grown, I like, I, I, everyone's always asking me like when you shake your bags. I don't have a good standard time frame, but the way I do it is I wait until the grain, or the mycelium has grown over the three grains away from the agar. And that's just a rough indicator to me that it's ready to bust up and shake. And you can just bust that mycelium up, reshake it, redistribute it, and then your jar will grow in faster. If you need your jars to grow in a little bit slower, then just don't reshake them and let them grow in the rest of the way. And then you can bust them up and use them in your uh, grain spawn bags. When I'm cleaning up everything, I just take that dish and instead of recovering it or Ziploc bagging it or just trashing it, I've covered it up now. If any mold, bacteria, or anything's growing in there, it can sit in my trash and it's encapsulated. And now guys, you should be able to manufacture your own grain spawn. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed it. And uh, please remember to hit that subscribe button. Something like over 40% of my audience is not subscribed. And uh, as always, y'all, keep spawning culture.